Now the kicker for the Cubs, T.N. Pham, has made just two field goals all season. It looked like the Cubs were going to go for it. And now they'll bring on a different unit. And Pham, again, has made just two all year. We'll try this one from 33 to start the scoring. Quick snap and a fake. Wide open is Holman. Where did he come from? He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Brenham. What James, a play. James Holman was wide open. Nobody picked him up. I almost think they ran 10 players out of the field and then let Holman kind of step in unannounced. You can do that. I've seen it before in football. Watch how wide open Holman is on the side here. There is absolutely no sand crab around him. He catches the ball and just easily walks into the end zone. So Glenn West with some trickery right here to get things started. The Cubs are on the board first. Caleb Hill, the holder, with the touchdown pass to Holman, his ninth grab of the year. Now Pham stays in to add the extra point. What a beginning. The Brunham Cubs on their first drive with some trickeration. Sure, they hated to have that penalty. So now first and goal from the 10. There's a fade. Johnson up. He made the catch. Travante Johnson comes down with it. Touchdown, Brenham. There's the nice timing pattern right there. Just laid that up for his receiver, Travante Johnson, to come underneath that and catch it. And Johnson really going up high for that one. And that's what you like to see when you've got a tall receiver. Anytime you're over six feet and you've got that edge on the defensive backs, Lob it up there. See the nice throw there by Caleb. Gave him a chance to go up and make a play. Look at that. Fantastic job by Johnson coming down with that one. A win today for the Brunham Cubs and Glenn West, and a win next week would give him an even 200 wins in his career in a state championship game. 198 victories. So if you want to look ahead on a personal note or for a program, that's a big number and a big milestone in the not-too-distant future. And he deserves it. Outstanding coach. His father, Kenneth West, was a longtime assistant under Gordon Wood with the Brownwood Lions. He just grew up around football. Hill has to be scrambling to throw the ball downfield and had to home and catch it. He grabbed the football. Was he inbounds? The official is going to mark him with wow. a catch. <laughs> Got the one foot down. That's all you need in high school football. And Holman is having himself one heck of a game. Could be more impressed with him. We're going to see this again. The fans reacting. You can hear the uh, noise in the background. They saw it on the monitor. And I think Holman, well, he got that left foot down. I'm not sure if that right foot was out of bounds first. We're going to have to bring that back and see if we can get a pretty good look. That's it was awfully close. Yeah, left and right, both in right there. That's, That's a two-foot catch. Yeah. What a play. That's an NFL catch. My goodness. <laughs> it looked like it was almost as if Hill was going to just try and throw it to the boundary where only his man could catch it. And there's Ernest Patterson right into the end zone. Touchdown, Brenham. The great catch from Holman sets up the short touchdown run. 20 points on the board for the Cubs. Well, and there's the answer. I mean, no question about it. Poor Lavaca Calhoun had put together a nice drive for a touchdown all on the ground. Cubs come right back. Patterson takes it into the end zone for a touchdown. And Brenham back in front trying to go up by 14 now. So Patterson even closer to that school record set by Cleveland Franklin. But he gets a touchdown here in a short game. And the extra point from Pham is good. They're crowding one side of the line. They've noticed the tendency of the Sand Crabs to run to one side of the football. So it's caused uh, Port Lavaca Calhoun to kind of have some miscues here on this drive. We'll see here now with uh, third and about seven. Have we seen the Sand Crabs throw it at all today? I don't believe. I don't think so. <laughs> Oh, football's loose again, and this time it's still loose. A scoop and a score, Brandon Baird. Brandon Baird there to pick up the football. Turnovers costly here in the last couple minutes for Port Lavaca Calhoun, but it's all because of that pressure defense. The nice job up front getting a hat on it right off the top by uh, Eric Yeager, and then picking it up and taking it into the end zone was Brandon Baird. Wow. Big play. Huge play, and these teams just can't hold on to the football in the last five minutes, but Baird finally able to collect and score the touchdown. See the pursuit there on the defense, just wreaking havoc. Nice job uh, up front by Eric Yeager. And then right here, I'm kind of thinking, you know, Brandon Baird fall on it after what has happened in the last series, but you know what, he's got one of his men sitting next to him. It's really hard to tell a player that you can't just pick it up and run it in. I mean, the key is, if you're going to do that, just make sure you get the ball <laughs> and take it in. Yeah, you don't want to play catch up in this situation uh, with a minute three to play, down 28-14, ball pinned back on your own 
13-yard line. I don't know. That's that's tough. I know they like to run the football, but you might want to just take a knee here and put it on into halftime. See how conservative they want to be because, again, a lot of field ahead of them, although their one scoring drive went in excess of 90 yards, but it was helped out by a 93-yard run by Williams. And Brenham does have two timeouts remaining if they decide to do that. If you're Brenham, you may want to call a timeout. Hmm. Football's loose again. Picked up and scored for a touchdown. Desmond Lockett, who had a chance on the previous play, only to see Baird score, this time got his chance. A scoop and a score on back-to-back -back plays. Unbelievable. You could go an entire season without seeing that, and it happens twice in one game. Johnny on the spot, making a fantastic play, scooping that up is Desmond Lockett. He's had a great first half, and he gets a touchdown, and there's the salute right there, and wow, so just like that, Couple of key plays, and Brenham's now up 34-14, trying to increase it to a three-touchdown lead. Boy, staying on his feet was the important part of that return. And Lockett, who just about had one on the previous play, but seated to Baird, got his opportunity and the salute. The Texans left today to go to Indianapolis. J.J. Watt came out of the field before the game, took his picture with a lot of the Brenham Cubs who are out there. Maybe a little salute for J.J. Sure. And it's 35 to 14, and the worst possible scenario for the Sand Crabs has occurred, providing this balanced and good Brenham offense with points by their defense. Yeah, just a couple of minutes ago, we were talking about how they had a chance to, to tie this game up. They had the ball, about three minutes to play, and just like that, two costly turnovers that Brenham not only picks up the football, but scores on both plays. Back can't to back that. scoops and scores, amazing. Glenn West said it was going to come down to turnovers. He's been in these games long enough to know when you get two evenly matched teams, a lot of times it does come down to turnovers. And it's so cliche to say that in pregame, but really, in reality, that's exactly what's happened. The turnovers have been the difference. Ernest Patterson. Ernest Patterson to the end zone. Touchdown. Run him. Well, that was just what the doctor ordered, keeping the ball on the ground. Patterson picking up the big yardage to the outside. You asked me earlier if you thought that would be a good combination in the second half. There you go. No question about it. He's your bell cow in that backfield. He runs the ball well to the outside and using his blockers well, sprinting into the end zone for a touchdown. And wow, just like that, 41-14. Patterson so close now to the Brenham single season rushing record. What he's done is given his team a 41 to 14 lead, make it 42 to 14 with the extra point from TN Fan. Less than a minute into our third, the Cubs have added to their lead. I'm thinking right now, I'm doing the math in my head. Okay, if you're the Sand Crabs, you've got to find a way to get three and outs, three consecutive three and outs, and you need to score in less than about three to four minutes each drive. I mean, this is like a NASCAR situation. Yeah. You're like timing it out like that. It's like mileage gas fuel. <laughs> because you're right, the math is not in their favor. You almost have to sell out, maybe gamble a little bit defensively. Strip the ball. This is where Hill is dangerous. Look at there, up top, Travante Johnson to the house. 61 yards and a backbreaker of a touchdown for the Cubs. Absolutely, catch him off guard on a what looked like an obvious running situation, and they go up top with the deep pass. And I tell you, once again, that play's kind of been there all day long. Johnson had a good two or three yard step on his defender, and he catches this one in stride. What a pass by Caleb Hill. Mentioned he had a broken wrist earlier this year. Three touchdowns all season. He's had two today. So an impressive afternoon for Travante Johnson. And the extra point from Pham is good. So if the math did not work out well for the Sand Crabs before, the task has become that much more difficult. 37 seconds to play in our third quarter. You know, obviously Jonathan Gray has had his moments with Alito, and Brenham is one of those teams where, you know, that would be the ultimate challenge for them to take on a team that's averaging about, what, 50 points a game? <laughs> Boy, I love these matchups this late in the year with all the stats and the dominance these teams have enjoyed. Hill up top again. Ian Stride, Cortland Sutton into the end zone. Touchdown, Brenham Cubs. What a beautiful pass right there by Caleb Hill. 
And Sutton just hauling it in, in stride, both hands, kind of a Willie Mays over your shoulder kind of catch. But Caleb Hill, I tell you, the two or three times he's had to throw the ball in the second half, he has been right on the money. Look at that pass. Perfect. You, know, you, you made a, a remark earlier, Joe Namath, how about it? Right there. <laughs> well, he keeps those feet moving, gets rid of the football quickly. Here's an extra point try from Pham. It is true. 56 to 21. Grenham with the lead.